title of this video. Today's video is about the Pollock twins. Now, what I'm about to tell you is probably the craziest story that I've ever heard in my life. It's dark, it's twisted, it's spooky, it's unbelievable. And if you've never heard about the Pollock twins, you're in for a treat. Now, before I talk about them, I just want to say that whenever I hear someone talk about like creepy twins, instantly I think about the twins from The Shining. I mean, I've grown up watching that movie and that hallway scene always scared me as a kid. Like how eerie would it be to be walking around an empty hotel and you turn a corner just to see them standing there in matching blue dresses just staring at you. And they're always like, come play with us, Danny. I don't know, that movie is one of my favorites. I love to watch it around Halloween. But if you haven't seen it, go watch it. Those twins will give you nightmares. Anyways, moving that thought aside, the story of the Pollock twins is not fictional. In fact, it's very real and very dark and very tragic as well. So let's start the story from the very beginning, which is usually where you start stories. The strange story begins in the quaint and quiet town of Hexham in North Cumberland, England. There was this husband and wife named John and Florence Pollock, and they also had two daughters. One daughter was named Joanna, who was 11, and the other was Jacqueline, who was six. Now, they were a very happy family. They were super well off. They had this successful grocery and milk delivery business. So they were making a lot of money off that. And these two sisters were inseparable. They were best friends. The whole family was just happy. Basically, things couldn't have been better. They had this idyllic life and it was perfect. But then on May 7th, 1957, something very tragic happened. The two girls were on their way to church with a friend of theirs when they were hit by a car driven by a local woman. Basically, this woman had taken an overdose of all this medication, so she was driving erratically and hit their car. The two Pollock children were killed instantly in the accident. People say that when this car crashed into them, the two girls literally went flying through the air. And because this was such a horrible accident, it was all over the news and printed everywhere in the newspapers. People were absolutely devastated by hearing about this, especially because pretty much everyone in the town knew of this family and knew of these kids. And the two parents were obviously so upset about the news of their children. They both went into this horrible depression and then something weird started happening with the father. The father, whose name was John, reported having these constant visions. He was having these visions that his two daughters would be brought back to him in the form of twins. So they would be pretty much reborn, reincarnated. So he thought he was literally seeing the future. So he went to his wife, told her all about these visions and she did not believe him. In fact, she was super angry that he would be talking to her this way because she was grieving. But he was convinced that these two girls would be reborn in the form of twins in the future. And because his wife did not believe him, they literally almost got divorced over this argument. And I mean, I don't blame the wife. Imagine someone dies in your family and like someone's like, oh, I have a vision, they're gonna come back to us. It's really hard to hear that while you're grieving. Here's where the story takes a huge turn. The wife, Florence, became pregnant the following year. The pregnancy was unexpected and John kept telling her that it was gonna be twins just like he had in his vision. But they went to the doctor to check on the pregnancy and the doctor said no, it would only be one child. They could only hear one heartbeat. On the ultrasounds, it literally looked like just one child. But when it came time for her to deliver the baby, two babies came out as twins. It baffled the doctors, it baffled Florence, and basically John was like, see, I had this vision and it came true. So they named these twins Jillian and Jennifer. So these two girls were literally considered to be miracles. And John truly believed that it was their dead daughters that had come back again. Okay, so this story continues to get spooky because let's talk about the similarities between these two twins and the sisters that passed away. They had the exact same markings, scars, and birthmarks on their bodies as the sisters who had passed away. And when I say the exact same, I mean literally identical. Identical spots, identical shapes, everything was the same. One of the twins even had this long white scar over her forehead where Jacqueline had had this bicycle accident. And Jacqueline was one of the sisters who passed away, so how would this new twin have the exact same scar as her? Now, as these twins started growing up, they started having these memories that were really spooking people. As soon as they were old enough to talk, the twins began 
began asking for specific toys that Joanna and Jacqueline had owned. And what was spooky was that these parents had put all of these toys in boxes in the attic after their kids had passed away because they didn't want to see them anymore. But somehow these twins knew these toys existed and could even call each doll by their name. When they brought these old toys down from the attic, the twins instantly recognized them. They each picked which toys they thought used to belong to them and they were correct. They even said they were Santa's gifts, which in fact they were. And how would they know all of those things? Even more strange was that the two twins liked the same foods that Joanna and Jacqueline had liked. They had the same personalities, the same mannerisms, the same body builds. They liked the same games. They would even point out to scars on their bodies and say how they got them. And it would be the same way that Joanna and Jacqueline had gotten them. They were even said to be terrified of passing cars to the point that it was difficult to even get them to cross the street. Now, this next part really freaks me out. Florence, who was the mother, actually overheard these twins talking in their bedroom about how they died in a car crash. And they were going into details that literally they would never have known because no one had talked to them about the accident that happened to their sisters who passed away. When the family took a trip back to Hexham, the twins knew their way around and could accurately point out landmarks by name and the school they remembered attending. And they never attended that school. Joanne and Jacqueline attended that school. So years passed and these twins got a lot older, got into their teens, eventually grew up into adulthood. And slowly the memories of these twins past lives started to fade away and they stopped remembering all these crazy details. But even though they're now in their 50s, every so often they'll have dreams of their past lives. Dreams about actually being Joanna and Jacqueline. So this whole story is very crazy to me. I mean, it's baffled scientists, it's baffled doctors, because how can you literally have the same scars and birthmarks as your sisters who had passed away years prior? And how do you remember things that you've never been told before? And listen, I've never personally believed in reincarnation. I know a lot of people do, and that's cool, but this story actually has opened my eyes, and I mean, all the details are nuts. So one theory is that yes, they were reincarnated. And the other theory is that maybe these twins were just influenced by their parents. I mean, their parents really, really wanted to believe that these were their daughters who had come back from the car accident. So maybe they like put that energy and vibes and emotions onto their new twins. So the twins actually started to believe that that's who they were. I mean, if you grew up and your parents were convinced you were a horse, you'd probably start believing that too. You know what I mean? Because you're getting all of that like indication from your parents. So do you guys think they were just influenced to believe they were reincarnated or do you think they actually were? Comment down below. And I hope this story wasn't too confusing. I know there's a lot going on with the old sisters and the new twins and it's a little bit confusing. But if you guys want to read more on this, there's so much information and so much more details online. June and Jennifer Gibbons were born on April 11th, 1963 in Barbados and moved to a small town in Wales soon after. Now, my mom was actually born in Barbados not too long after them, actually. Not that that pertains to this story at all, but I found that interesting. Now, what makes this story so intriguing about these twins is that they both refused to speak to anyone. They would literally only speak to each other and sometimes their little sister Rose. They had this made up twin language that they would use and no one would understand them. But one day a psychologist actually secretly recorded them talking to each other. And what she discovered is that they were actually speaking English to one another, but at an incredibly fast speed. So literally this psychologist had to slow down the tape to understand what they were saying. How eerie is that? Now at school, the girls were frequently bullied to the point where school administrators let them leave early to avoid torment. So people at the school just thought they were so weird, so strange, and they treated them horribly. And it got so bad that teachers literally did not think they should be at school, so they left. And the bullying actually made the girls withdraw even more than they were before. And in an attempt to socialize them, June and Jennifer were sent to separate boarding schools. And this was the first time in their life they had ever been separated. And they literally became catatonic away from each other until they were reunited again. Now I find it 
so strange that they would decide to separate twins to make it easier on them. Who separates twins? And if you guys don't know what catatonic means, if you're in that state, you're basically unable to move or speak or really do anything. So basically they could not function without each other, which is kind of sad to be honest. The girls soon turned to writing, both fiction and keeping extensive diaries. When they got older, they even started writing novels and they would self-publish them, but they never really got any exposure or attention in the literary world because of how violent these novels were. They would write about some pretty horrific things. And also what they were writing about was almost just too bizarre for people to understand. So they never got popular as authors. Instead, they turned to petty crime for excitement and attention and they were caught burning a building to the ground. So in 1982, the judge sentenced them on 16 accounts of burglary and arson and they were both declared criminally insane. So they were taken to Broadmoor Hospital, which is a very high security hospital for criminals. And obviously they still refused to speak. They had antisocial behavior. They had zombie-like movements. It literally says that, zombie-like movements. Everything about them was just strange, which is why they were taken to basically this mental hospital. While at Broadmoor, the girls were kept in separate wards, but spent all of their social time together. And what's kind of creepy is that nurses would find them in the same pose and position in each of their rooms, even though they were separated. It was like if one was sitting cross-legged, the other one would be sitting cross-legged. If one was on the bed with her arms behind her head, the other one would be too. It was like even though they couldn't see each other, they would be mimicking each other's movements, and that really freaked out the nurses. And then on several occasions, the girls would attack each other for no reason at all, and they often took turns eating. One day one would eat, while the other would abstain. So they just had this strange, unhealthy, codependent relationship. They couldn't exist apart, but they couldn't lead a normal life together. The one twin named Jennifer was only 10 minutes younger than her sister June, but Jennifer thought that June was so much prettier than her. She also thought that June was so much smarter than her, so Jennifer had this massive amount of jealousy for her sister. And June would sense this jealousy all the time, and she even wrote one day in her diary it says, she wants us to be equal. Dear Lord, I am scared of her. She is not normal. Someone is driving her insane. It is me. She is the dark sister robbing me of sunlight. So that's a pretty dark and eerie diary entry right there. One day, uh, this journalist, her name was Marjorie Wallace. She heard about these twins because a lot of people were talking about them. So one day she sat down and had tea with the twins one day. And it was so strange because as they were sitting there, Jennifer randomly brought up that she had to die. And when the journalist asked her why, she responded with, this is a quote, because we decided. It says, it would not be enough to live separately. They would always possess one another. One of them had to die so the other could live a normal life. It is such a strange concept and these twins really believed that. In 1993, the girls were finally granted a transfer to a place called Caswell Clinic. But when the twins arrived at this new place, Place, people noticed that Jennifer looked very, very ill. She was rushed to the hospital and pronounced dead of acute myocarditis, which is basically this sudden lethal inflammation of the heart. And it's normally either caused by a viral infection, drugs, or being poisoned. And what's strange is that doctors found no evidence of any of that in her body when she died. So the cause of this thing happening to her has never really been identified. So after Jennifer passed away, June was really grief stricken by the loss, but she was also relieved. This is what she said after her sister passed away. She said, we were war weary. It had been a long battle. Someone had to break the vicious circle. So today June lives a very normal life. She speaks to people again. She lives independently and she completely put the past behind her. She visits her sister's grave often. It is inscribed with a poem written by June. So this is what she wrote on her sister's grave. We once were two. We two made one. We no more two, though life be one. 
rest in peace. So that is literally what is on her gravestone. So I just found this story to be so intriguing. It's very sad, it's very eerie, and it's all very, very real and baffles people all around the world, baffles psychologists, doctors, it's just crazy to me. Obviously, there's so much more detail you can look up. It's all over the internet. So if you guys want to comment anything down below that I missed, definitely feel free to. Let's get into the video. Today we're gonna to be talking about what's called twin telepathy. Now, if you did not know, telepathy is defined as transmittal and reception of thoughts by means other than through the normal senses as a form of extrasensory perception. That was almost a tongue twister. Science is skeptical on the subject of telepathy, yet many pairs of twins swear it's a real phenomenon. Many of them say that they can truly read each other's minds. So these true stories stories that I'm about to tell you are definitely creepy, but also kind of cool and might make you wish you had a twin to like do this with. Although I feel like I can actually read my own sister's thoughts in real life and we're not twins. I think we're like three years apart. All right, so the first story is called Predicting a Disappearance. There's a story about these two twin girls that were about four years old and every single day they would walk to nursery school with their mom. One twin would walk on the right side of her and one twin would walk on the left. At their nursery school, they were friends with these two twin boys and sometimes after school they would go over to their house to play while their moms talked over coffee. I feel like we all had those friends from school where you were friends with them and then your mom was friends with their mom, you know what I mean? On one particular morning on their walk to nursery school, one of the twins whispered in their mom's ear, what is wrong with the twin boy's father? And then immediately after the other twin on the opposite side of her whispered the same question into her ear. So the twins had not heard each other but said the same thing to their mom. The mother was incredibly confused and told them there was nothing wrong with the twin boy's father. But at school, the twin boys and their mom hadn't shown up and they had never missed a day before. And it was later found out that apparently the father had gone missing the night before. He hadn't returned home and the police were out looking for him. So it was just super strange how the twins had this feeling at the same time that something was wrong. This next story Story is actually kind of similar. It was where two twins predicted a motorcycle crash. This story is about these two nine-year-old twin sisters that were sitting on their front lawn one day. They were sitting right beside the road throwing acorns across the street onto their neighbor's yard. They saw a motorcycle coming down the road from very far away and they both looked at each other and at the same time they said, it's going to crash. And there was no real reason for them to think this, but again, for some odd reason, they both had this instinct that something bad was about to happen. They raced into the house and grabbed the telephone so they could call for help. And just as they came back outside, the motorcycle crashed into the exact same spot that they had been sitting. So if they had still been there, there was no way that they would have survived. Now the man on the motorcycle ended up being okay, thank goodness. But to this day, they still can't explain how they both had the same premonition. The next story is about the Whisper Twins. I found this story about this girl named Jenna who remembered having these two twin girls in her class. She said they both had long black hair and dark eyes and they never really spoke to anyone else except for each other. They both just seemed really quiet and reserved. The teacher always had to make sure their desks were right beside each other and if one twin was sick, the other one wouldn't go to school either. Now the whole entire class started calling these twins the Whisper Twins because they would sit at the back of the class just staring at people and every so often they would lean into each other and start whispering something that no one else could hear. And as soon as they stopped and looked up, something horrible would happen in the classroom. Now people weren't sure if it was a coincidence or if something actually happened with these twins. Was it something supernatural? Was it something strange? For example, one day after they were caught whispering, the computer on the teacher's desk started sparking and eventually caught fire. So the whole school had to evacuate while they waited on the firemen. Another time, one of the twins bullies started choking on her lunch and the teacher had to run over and do the Heimlich maneuver. And when everyone looked at the twins at the back of the class, they were just sitting there quietly smiling. It was just known to everybody that strange things would happen when they whispered. Sometimes they would even just look at each other and something strange would happen. Now, I don't know about you guys, but this story kind of reminded me of the silent twins and I've done a video about that before and it's basically 
basically where they would only talk to each other and nobody else. Is that like a common twin thing? All right, this next story is called The Night Her Twin Perished. There was this woman in her 40s who had a twin brother and she woke up in the middle of the night from a very odd dream. In her dream, her brother walked up to her and asked her to take care of his two children. He told her that he was leaving and really needed somebody to look after them. Now she woke up and this dream was just really upsetting her. She felt this huge sorrow and then unfortunately found out that her brother actually passed away in his sleep. So it was like he actually appeared to her as it happened. And lastly, we have a story called The Sleep Talkers. This story is about these two twin toddlers and their parents would always witness them sleep talking. Now the super creepy thing about this is that they both slept in different rooms and they would always have this back and forth conversation with each other without being able to actually hear each other. One night they were specifically talking about how much fun they had playing in the sandbox earlier that day. And years later, they both had this dream about their older sister being in serious danger. And the next morning, this older sister received phone calls from both of them separately asking if she was okay. Imagine being a parent and hearing your two twin daughters in separate rooms sleep talking to each other. I mean, I feel like it would be eerie, but like fascinating at the same time. Now, these dolls were also known as the Just Like Me dolls, and they were first created on Christmas of 1996. That was literally right after my sister was born. They are customizable mail order dolls designed to look like their owners. The buyer picks the outfit, eye color, hair color, and skin tone of the doll. They send in a photo of the child that the doll is for, and then the doll's face is personally sculpted to match that child. There's even full-sized outfits that you can buy so you can wear the same outfit as your doll just to make you even look more alike than your customizable twin. Now, when these dolls were first launched, people went crazy over them and the detail was eerily precise to what each child looked like. You were basically ordering a little doppelganger that would just sit in your room and stare at you. Now, these dolls were not cheap at all. I believe the starting price was $150 and that didn't even cover the costs of the different outfits that you may want, the different accessories. I feel like it's kind of like going to build a bear or something. Like the bear seems cheap, but once you get everything else, oh, it's a lot of money. And the doll arrives approximately 45 days after you order it, which I don't think is too bad for a fully customizable doll. They were also approximately 23 inches tall. So when the company was first producing these dolls, they were doing very well and really tried to make sure the quality of their dolls was amazing. The thing was, once millions of people caught on and began ordering, they found it hard to really keep up with the demand. So they weren't able to put as much detail into each doll like they once were. Because like I said, they just didn't have enough time, resources, staff to do that. So by 2001, people were complaining that their dolls didn't look personal enough. Some people even called them out for sending out the same dolls to multiple people. It was like they saw a kid with brown hair, green eyes. So they just sent out a doll with those two things without customizing any other physical features. They started to get 19,000 calls from angry parents every single day until they finally shut down in 2002. What's so strange though, is that Walmart still sells my twin doll outfits on their website. I have no idea why, because they've been closed since 2002. But maybe people still use their dolls and display their dolls. I don't know. Like I said, comment down below if you have one. I really need to know. But also let me know if you would ever order something like like this if it was still around. I'm sure there are companies and businesses out there who do still do this type of thing, but do you really want a mini version of yourself? I feel like there's been horror movies about that. So there was this kind of creepy phenomenon going on with these dolls where the eyes were suddenly turning red. One creepy thing that kept coming up in my research was people saying that after having their dolls for almost 30 years, they're noticing the eyes are beginning to turn red. And there are tons of pictures on Google that people are uploading of these dolls suddenly looking super evil as they age. And if we're trying to think logically about this, the color change
change could be from all the years that the doll was exposed to sunlight, but what I don't understand is how like bright blue eyes could suddenly turn dark red. I would understand if the doll originally had a darker eye color that maybe lightened to sort of a red tone, but that's not the case for all of them. I did find an unsettling story about a family that had been hearing noises in their attic on and off for about 15 years, and they just assumed it was mice or small animals because they lived pretty isolated in the countryside. And it's not unusual for animals to get into your attic, especially in the colder months, but sometimes those sounds sounded like little footsteps running above them. Well, they sold their house one day and went up into the attic to grab any storage they would want to take with them when they saw the My Twin doll just sitting there beside some old boxes. Even in the dim light, they could see her red eyes almost glowing in the shadows. And what was even creepier was that the dust around her was disturbed as if she had been walking around just moments prior. Now, because I'm kind of crazy, I went onto eBay and I actually bought one of these red-eyed dolls. So the one that I bought, her eyes used to be like a really light green color and now it's red. So, and what's so weird is that if you go onto some of those sites looking at my twin dolls, but the ones that have eyes that turned red are selling for like 20 bucks, 30 bucks, like a really cheap price. It's like these people are really trying to get rid of them, so I took one off their hands. I'll definitely unbox it on my vlog channel when it gets here. I'm I'm a little afraid. I also found these weird rumors from people saying the doll's hair was real human hair and that's why they were shut down. But I don't think this was actually the case. This is just like a silly rumor, I assume. Although I did check Etsy to see if they had any of these dolls available to purchase. And I did find some listings that said, my twin long human hair doll. So take that for what you will. I also found another creepy story called the mystery doll. There's this girl that said that when she was 12, her doorbell rang when she was home alone after school and her parents had always told her not to open it when they were still at work. So she just looked through the peephole and she saw this doll just sitting on her porch. So of course, because she was curious, she opened up the door and picked up the doll and she was surprised to see that it looked just like her. It had the same hair color, the same eye color and some beauty spots in the exact same place as her face. What's really disturbing about this story is that that they never found out who sent this doll to her. Her parents called all of their relatives and friends and no one owned up to giving her this gift. And I feel like the rest of my life, I'd be looking over my shoulder to see if someone was watching me in the neighborhood because like that's like stalker behavior. That would not be okay. If a doll that looked exactly like me showed up on my doorstep, I'd probably move. People originally believed that encountering an apparition of yourself was an omen of imminent death. Historical figures reported seeing their double just before they passed. For example, before her death, Queen Elizabeth I was rumored to have seen a corpse-like figure of herself lying on her own bed. And I never knew that terrifying fact about her, and it's just gonna bother me forever. Percy Shelley, who was an English poet in the 1800s, was visited by his doppelganger before he died in a sailing accident. A few days prior to embarking on the fateful journey, the romantic poet followed the phantom as it walked from his Italian beach house to the seashore. And he watched as it silently pointed out to the waves before vanishing. And that's just a couple stories of famous people who have seen their doppelganger before they died. New fear unlocked. So let's talk about Emily Seiji. This is apparently the school teacher. And I just wanna say it is very very important to note that this is not an urban legend, folklore, just a scary story. This is apparently a true account of something very bizarre that happened in real life. Emily Seiji was a school teacher back in the early 1800s. She was dedicated and adored by her students, but over the course of her teaching career, a bizarre pattern emerged. In just 16 years on the job, Emily had over 19 different teaching positions in countless different schools across France. So people were becoming very suspicious by this. How could such a sincere and hardworking teacher be turned away from so many schools? But when the 32 year old began her 19th teaching role at elite boarding school in 1846, it soon became very clear. There was a very good reason why Emily could not retain her teaching roles. While teaching at this school, a number of teachers and students began complaining about 
about seeing Emily's twin in the classroom. And this twin they were speaking of was often seen imitating Emily's actions and even sitting silently beside her or behind her. It would copy her movements as she ate, as she wrote on the chalkboard, and on another occasion, this twin was seen helping Emily fix a student's dress. The most bizarre thing about this is that Emily had no idea of her doppelganger's existence. She never once saw it, and that's probably because it was always behind her. Witnesses claimed that she often appeared strangely groggy and lethargic when her twin appeared, almost like it was draining her energy. People that have heard this story have said that it must have all just been a hallucination. But how could all 30 students in her class be hallucinating at the exact same time? And after some time, this doppelganger seemed to stray further and further from Emily. On one occasion, Emily was teaching a class of 42 girls when she stepped outside to pick some flowers from the garden. While she was away from the classroom, the students were left intently working on their sewing. From the window, they could all see Emily in the garden, but just moments after she left the room, Emily's twin appeared in the teacher's chair. Students thought nothing of it until one gasped and pointed out the window where Emily was still working diligently in the garden. So all these students were working, they looked out the window, saw their teacher, but then looked in front of them and saw another version of their teacher in the chair looking at them. So two of the students decided to get up and walk over to this doppelganger. They were super brave and they decided to reach out and touch it. They said it looked just like Emily Sage. In in all aspects, except that when they ran their hands through this doppelganger, it felt empty. They said it felt like what cobwebs were made of. Another student said it was like pulling your hand through fabric. And when Emily was asked about this incident, she seemed very confused. While she didn't see the doppelganger, she did say that while she was out in the garden, she had an urge to go back into the classroom to supervise the children while she was picking flowers. So was she somehow able to project her own self into places that she wanted to be? Because that sounds nearly impossible. Eventually, Emily was reportedly let go as parents were threatening to take their daughters out of the school. And according to reports, nothing was heard about Emily Sage and her bizarre twin ever again. And it's very important to note that the only documentation we have about this happening is from a book written by a man named named Robert Dale Owens, who heard the story from one of her students that was in her classroom at the time. So the reason why this whole thing is deemed unsolved is firstly because it took place such a long time ago that there's no proper documentation, photos, videos, anything like that. And also because scientists are not able to explain this. How the heck did this happen? How did all of these students in her class report this when it seems impossible? Today we are going to be talking about doppelgangers, which I know probably seems totally random, but if you guys saw the video that my sister Mandy and I did, I think about a month ago, we found this one picture of her that didn't really look like her, like it looked like sort of similar, but as if someone like swapped her out or something. So then I decided to sort of research doppelgangers, and um, what I found out was that it's not exactly what Mandy and I thought. I'm going to read you the definition online, it is an apparition or double of a living person. So it's not when someone looks different, it's actually when there's like a double of the same person. Like there's another definition that says, one who nearly or completely resembles another but with no biological relation. And it's also creepy because it says, it's believed to be an omen of death if one was ever to see their doppelganger. So if you ever actually met your doppelganger in person, it's a really bad sign. <laughs> Obviously, this is not necessarily true because I don't want to freak you guys out in case you've met someone who kind of looks like your twin. There's another definition that says a ghostly duplicate of a living person. So some of these are more supernatural paranormal and some of these are just saying, oh, it's someone who really looks like you. So I went online and found a bunch of pictures of people who claim to have met their doppelgangers. A lot of these people look literally identical and some of them don't really look that identical. So what we're gonna do is 
we're gonna look through these pictures quickly and I'm basically gonna say if I think they do look like doppelgangers or if they don't. So it's like a yes or no thing and you guys can also watch and sort of decide for yourself as well. I feel like I'm talking really fast. Am I talking really fast? That was one thing my teacher always said in my class presentations. She would stop me and be like, Jess, you're talking like a thousand words a minute, slow down. So here's the first one. We have these two gorgeous redheads and honestly, their noses and their eyes look so similar. So I'm gonna definitely say yes for this one. Ooh, this one looks really similar as well, but I think they more look like brothers than doppelgangers. So I'm gonna say no. Ooh, you know what makes this one look so similar is like the glasses and the beard. Like the glasses are really similar, but I'm gonna say no for this one. This one looks pretty similar too, but I think more like family or like brothers. And why is the picture like red? It looks like they're standing in like a sauna or like the sun is about to fall down on them or something. This one actually looks scary similar. I guess this guy saw an ad for Polo in, in a magazine and like thought it looked just like him. So I'm gonna say yes for this one. He has a doppelganger model. Oh, these guys do look really, really similar. I'm gonna say yes for this one, but like the bald heads do really help. Um, see when their glasses are covering their eyes, it's really hard to tell. So I'm gonna say no for this one, but it is scary how they have like the same length of beard and like sort of the same looking face. Oh my gosh. I almost wonder if some of these are like purposely done. Like how did, like they're both bald, they both have the same beard. It's so weird to me. These two look pretty similar as well, but it's the hairstyle and like sort of their outfits and like they're both wearing hats. That's crazy. I feel like if I ever meet someone in real life that looks just like me, I'd be kind of scared. Oh, I see this. Maybe your doppelganger is a celebrity that does look like the guy from House, but it's not like super, super similar, but I can definitely see that. Oh my gosh, this is hilarious. <laughs> yeah, they definitely have the same hair. They definitely do. And like the eyes and eyebrows are really similar as well. Oh my gosh. You're just minding your own business on the subway. That is crazy. Yeah, they definitely have the same side profiles here. Oh my gosh. So this is a painting that looks like, oh, what's this guy's name? I can't remember his name, but he's like a celebrity as well. But that looks really similar to him. <laughs> That's really funny. If only the guy in the painting had like a slightly longer beard and longer hair, that would be like identical right there. These are similar too. I actually never thought of like paintings looking like people, but I guess that's very like possible, right? This one, not so much. Maybe the eyes and the nose, but that's about it. When you regret shaving your stash off. <laughs> yeah, for real. Well now, that's quite a resemblance. Kind of. I feel like people's eyes and noses look more similar in all these photos. I think it captures him, that's so funny. I bet if you went to a really large art museum, you'd be able to find at least one painting that slightly resembles you because think about how many like portraits and paintings of people are in museums, right? Oh, we found our baby's doppelganger at the gallery. <laughs> well, I mean, the baby is wearing that navy blue color, so that's pretty cool. Visited Paris this weekend. Just when I was about to take a picture of the Mona Lisa, something better caught my eye. Yeah, true, and they're both wearing black too. I'm Henry the Eighth. I am. <laughs> yeah, so this guy obviously dressed up as that painting to look more like it, which is kind of cheating, but it makes for a good picture. Historic doppelganger time. Yeah, the guy almost looks like um, Chris Hemsworth or Liam Hemsworth, maybe Liam Hemsworth. I always get those two mixed up. Weird Al proves he is immortal at the Louvre. That painting has always freaked me out ever since I was a kid. I don't know what it is about it, but it's like this person's all shadowed, but you can see their arm and their face and they look evil. I'm so sorry, but this painting always looks so evil to me. Found his doppelganger in Trento, Trento, Italy Science Museum. Yeah. Yeah, that kind of looks like him. But honestly, whenever I see these sort of realistic statues at museums, it scares me. Like imagine being a janitor or someone just cleaning the museum at night and like you just have to clean around these creepy like realistic people. Ooh, same thing for like wax museums and stuff. How do you work there? I would have nightmares. Gallery lookalike. Yeah, that kind of looks like him. But once again, it's like an eye and the nose thing. And that is a very small painting. I've always admired people who can make really detailed but small paintings. Paintings, you know. Oh my gosh, my friend spotted this painting of himself while walking through the Met. <laughs> 
Yep, he just needs like that little cute dog beside him and the picture is like completely made. Twin from the past. I wonder if he actually like wore that outfit to the museum and then saw that, like how spooky would that be? But I feel like he purposely dressed up like this. My best mate went to the Louvre and discovered a painting of him done many years before. Yep, kind of looks like him. Probably should have taken the headphones off to do this picture, but it's okay. We'll let it, we'll let it be. I found my doppelganger from half a century ago in an art museum in Zurich. Zurich? Oh my gosh, I don't know how to say it. I'm so sorry. I feel so dumb. That's a really look-alike profile there. Or side profile, I should say. I'm the head. Oh my gosh, that's hilarious. For a second, I had to look at that and be like, wait, what? Is it just a head? Is that a decapitated head? What the heck? Found my doppelganger at the Louvre. Inigo Mel Melcher de Velasco. I'm so bad at pronouncing things. I'm so sorry. But yes, I mean, the hair is on point. It seems like a lot of people are finding their doppelgangers in paintings in the Louvre. Found my great great grandmother at the Louvre. <laughs> yep, that's another one. And I love how the hair is so similar. My friend is actually a time traveler. <laughs> yep, the beard and the hair is on point. So I found a picture of myself dressed as a samurai 111 years ago at the Met. Apparently I was a collector of samurai armor. I've drunk a lot since then so I don't really recall, but it's totally plausible that it's me. That is quite the paragraph right there. Yeah, he just has to look a little bit more angry and it would be perfect. The doppelganger experience. Yes, those noses though. Those noses and like the way like his mouth is like turned down under his beard. Made an interesting discovery at the art museum today. <laughs> yeah, oh this is the same painting the other guy looked like. Hmm, that's interesting. So he goes to the art museum and this happened. I am in shock. That is so similar. Whoa. I've seen this one face to face with yourself in a museum. This girl, I've seen this somewhere, maybe on Tumblr or something, but her face looks just like that girl in the, in the painting. Met my doppelganger at work. We started working at the same facility and people kept mixing us up. Yeah, they have very similar smiles and like the glasses are like identical. Met my doppelganger in college. He was, he was a security guard at Target. Yep. And the same glasses. That is so weird. Met my doppelganger at Chick-fil-A. I actually didn't even see it until all her coworkers started flipping out. They were convinced we were twins trying to pull one over on them. After they took the picture, I flipped too. Yeah, they look like twin sisters. My fiance ran into his doppelganger at a car show. I called the guy over and made them take a photo together. Yeah, for real. Found my doppelganger at the pub after my friends went and hugged her. Um. Sort of. I'd say it's the hair that's more similar, but I don't think it's like doppelganger material, you know? Just now we found my doppelganger. Oh my gosh, it's always the glasses and the beard. Always the glasses and the beard. My wife met her doppelganger on our holiday in Rome. Yeah, they have- oh my gosh. That is so weird. They have the same hair and everything. They look the same age. It just makes me sort of realize that there's probably someone out there for everybody that looks like so close to them. Because think about how many people are in the world. Like there's only so many different face shapes that could be made, you know? Just 20 minutes before I walked into the restaurant, the server told her she looked like me. Yes, it's like the same jawline and everything. <laughs> so my friend found his doppelganger. Why do they both look so stunned by the camera? Like this guy on the left has like a double chin going on. He's like, like why is that happening? Met my doppelganger. He's a better smiler than I am. <laughs> Yes, he is a better smiler. <laughs> Gotta show those teeth. I was walking around a while back and met my doppelganger. We even had the same first name. That's scary. And they're both wearing the same like shirt and hat and glasses. Got stationed in Okin Okinawa. And shortly after my doppelganger joined my unit. Yeah, same eyes, mouth, nose, face shape. I met my Canadian doppelganger at a cruise ship with my wife on our honeymoon. Oh my gosh, see, <laughs> this whole video is just gonna be me like, oh my gosh, yep, oh my gosh, yep. <laughs> Hopefully this is not getting boring. That's like cruise through the rest. Met my doppelganger and thought I'd share. We even had matching hair accessories. I'm on the left. His girlfriend of one year started walking towards me thinking I was him. <laughs> just the height difference. If they were the same height, it'd be like perfect. Saw a doppelganger on front page, met mine a few weeks ago. My boyfriend left, met his doppelganger at Ikea last night. <laughs> I met my twin brother from another mother at the bar. His name is Adam and he also likes beer. <laughs> yeah, that's insane. Even the way the hair is parted and everything. Okay, well apparently my internet just crashed. I had like 10 more photos to look through, but my computer just decided to like not work, which is really great. So I think I'm gonna end the video here. But I asked you guys a few nights ago to send me pictures of people people who you think are my doppelgangers. So like maybe friends and family you know that look like me or celebrities that look like me. 
so you guys sent them all to me on Twitter a few nights ago and so I have a file on my computer that I'm gonna react to in the next video where I get to see if I actually might have a doppelganger so that'll be interesting so stay tuned for that video next <laughs> Today I'm going to be reacting to the doppelgangers of me that you guys sent me. <laughs> I have seen some of them, but some of them I just saved really quickly into a file, so a lot of this is going to be my genuine reaction, and I'll tell you yes or no if I think these people look like me. I feel like a lot of them won't, but you know, we'll see. One that I've gotten my whole entire life, well not my whole life, maybe the last like five years of my life, is that I look like Jeanette McCurdy, and um, I've gotten probably this comment thousands of times on my YouTube channel. Sometimes when I go to the grocery store, the cashier will tell me. My family members have told me. Just people, strangers have come up and been like, hey, you look like Jeanette McCurdy. Especially when my hair was blonde back at the beginning of high school. That is especially when I heard that comment. Um, do I personally think I look like her? No. I think maybe we have a you know, similar cheeks and noses, but I just don't see it completely. But, um, you know, I guess you guys are on the outside looking at both of us, so maybe you guys have a better opinion on that. But anyways, let's get into the doppelgangers that you guys think are mine. Some of these are a stretch, but here are some celebs I think you look like. Jeanette McCurdy, of course, Lucy Hale, Scarlett Johansson, and Natalie Dyer. Maybe Natalie Dyer slightly looks like me, I don't really know, but the other ones, not so much. I think it's the cheekbones that are like making people think that we look super similar, but I don't know. I think you look like Megan Fox. No way. No way. I don't see similarities there at all. Like our eyes are totally different. I have like way wider eyes. Like people have always told me I have almost like baby doll eyes. So I think that looks totally different. You have always reminded me of Lacey Chabert. I don't see this one either, guys. I don't know. I think we look super different. Bella from Twilight, really? Cause I'm pale? Cause I look like a vampire, is that why? <laughs> um, I don't see this one either, but I'm very flattered that you compare me to a vampire. Oh, um, this is Zoe Degonchanel. Degonchanel? Deo Chanel now? What's her last name? Oh my gosh. Why don't I know this? What's her name, Zoe? Like, I'm so off on the pronunciation right now. Zoe De Chanel. There we go. Okay, I was close, kind of, right? No, I wasn't. Um, maybe our hair styles are kind of similar, but I don't see myself in her. Edward Scissorhands. Edward Scissorhands. Is this also because I'm pale and like to wear black and I used to have black hair, is that why? <laughs> Um, I hope this is a joke and I hope that um, I don't really look like him, although I love Johnny Depp, but the way his makeup is at this point, he's a little bit scary. <laughs> Maybe our lips are slightly similar, but that's about it. I think you kind of look like Vanessa. I don't know what this girl's last name is, but maybe? Maybe a little bit? So far, there hasn't been anyone that I'm like, yes. Jeanette McCurdy, look at the resemblance. Maybe, I don't know. It, the eyes and the cheeks, maybe, and the nose, I don't know. So far, I will admit she's the closest one, but I would not consider her my doppelganger. It'd be so funny if you guys went on Twitter and tweeted her asking her if she thought that I was her doppelganger. Please, I would love to hear what she says. So if you guys have a Twitter, just tweet her and be like, do you think Jessie B is your doppelganger? And put like a picture, please. You look almost exactly like Amy Lee from Evanescence. Yes, I've actually gotten that one a lot too. I don't really see it personally. Um, my hair used to be really dark like her and we do have similar like cheekbones. Like anybody with bigger cheeks automatically kind of look like me, but I love how this girl was like, the first and fourth pick is you and the second and third pick is Amy, as if I don't know which ones are me. Okay, so I got this girl again. I think what's throwing me off is the mouth because the mouth doesn't really look like me. Ursula in human form? Ursula. Ursula. What? Um, I mean, her human form is kind of pretty, but she still looks very, very evil, so I don't know how I feel about this one. Jeanette McCurdy. I literally have thought this since I started watching your videos. Okay. This kind of looks like you. She has similarities. She looks really familiar. What, what show is she from? I do not remember. But maybe the eyes. Maybe the eyes. Just because. I- I hope you don't think I look like Edward. Um, his jawline is definitely very different than mine. But those gold eyes though. Doesn't the gold eyes mean he's hungry? I think so. I think he's about to uh, eat somebody. But yeah, you guys just like to compare me to vampires. <laughs> the skin is right on there. Here is Kat Dennings. Her lips are so much more full than mine though, and I feel like her face is like skinnier. Oh my. 
do I look like this beast? <laughs> this is from Adventure Time. I've never seen that show, but um, I know a lot of people who like it, and I've never heard that I look like this character. I don't know what her name is, but is she like part monster or something? You look so much like Taylor Momsen. I have never heard that one before. I used to listen to her music all the time though, so I'm kind of flattered. She kind of looks like you. Another Megan Fox one. Really? Okay, you guys have to comment down below which ones you do think look like me because I don't see it. I don't know why, but when you said this, I instantly thought of her, but only if she had longer hair. Oh, she was in um, that show my grandma and I used to watch. I can't remember the name. Once Upon a Time, I think. She was like Snow White or something. Yeah, she's cute. I mean, the cheeks again. Once again, it's the cheeks. I seriously think she could be your twin. She's Grace Phillips. I got this one probably just as much as I got uh, Jeanette McCurdy's. So this girl and Jeanette McCurdy, I guess people think I look like the most. Um, was she the girl that was in the Vampire Diaries for a bit? I think she was. I could be mistaking her for someone else though, but um, I can see the eyes and maybe sort of the nose, but I don't know. Oh my gosh, no way. Dita Von Tees doesn't exactly look like you. She looks like an older sister who has a similar skin tone and hair color with the dark mysterious vibe to your characters. If you cover her mouth and nose in the picture, you can see the major similarities. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm covering the nose and the mouth and our eyes do look kind of similar, but everything else I don't see. Oh, who is this girl? I wish people would leave me some of the names for these people because I like, I'm not good with knowing celebrities' names. Although this girl can be like an Instagram model maybe? I'm not too sure. We do do similar makeup, that's for sure. I love wearing that sort of nude color that she's wearing. Emily Rudd. Oh my gosh, I remember when this girl was all over Tumblr, like all of her pictures and stuff. She is beautiful. I've always thought she just looked gorgeous, so to compare me to her, like I'm really flattered. <laughs> you look like Jeanette McCurdy. <laughs> yeah, no. Bella, once again, once again, yep, yeah. Bella, vampire. You kind of look like Shailene Woodley. Really? She has freckles though. Like I'm jealous. I don't have freckles. I wish I had freckles. And here's that other girl again. Okay. She has very blue eyes though. She has like blue eyes like Ty does. You remind me of Buffy for some reason. Maybe because you kind of look like a vampire. I don't think I look like Buffy, but because you brought her up, I actually tried starting to watch Buffy the Vampire Slayer in I think October. And like I couldn't get into it. And I was so upset because so many people like love this show. You look like my Bratz dolls when I was younger. I mean, <laughs> I do not have those lips, that's for sure. I have such thin lips. Okay, do I have a large head too? I don't know. I think you look like Grace Phillips. There we go, when she plays Leela. What show is that from? I'm so out of the loop. I don't know who this girl is, but when I had dark hair, maybe a little bit. My favorite character from a game called Mad Father. Mad Father. That sounds like a very scary game. <laughs> I don't want my dad to be mad at me. But uh, oh my gosh, she's so cute though. I love the bow in her hair. Here's, uh, what's her name again? Emily Rudd. So pretty. Sorry, no offense. I love you so much. Another ghost one. So ghost, vampire. I get it guys, I'm pale, okay? India Easley? Oh, is she the one who plays that scary, like, possessed girl in all those movies? Am I thinking of this girl, the one who plays, like, the ring and, like, the one from, um, Silent Hill? Is this this girl? I'm gonna look it up. I could be thinking of someone totally different. Oh no, it's not. Wow, I've got the total, like, it's the wrong person, I'm sorry. I'm not good with faces, apparently. Another Jeanette McCurdy. Okay, her hair's a little bit different that time. Oh, this girl was in Inspector Gadget, and I think she also showed up in Gossip Girl as well. I don't see it, though. And I definitely, like, I never wear my hair in a ponytail, like, ever. Vanessa Morano. There she is again. I don't know why, but you look a lot like that mood guy. I kind of do. I kind of do. <laughs> that, that face, though. <laughs> okay, Michelle Trachenberg. That's her name. Um, most of this video is just going to be like, I don't see it. Oh, here it is again. She has similar features. Maybe the nose. Jeanette McCurdy. Okay. Lucy Hale. There we go again. I don't see this one for sure. I look like Lord. Um, maybe Lily Collins. Maybe. I feel like a lot of these photos are like similar noses and eyes. I don't know who this is, but it looks just like you. That is Jeanette McCurdy again. He's a celebrity too. Dracula, really? Dracula? Do you guys think you're funny? You think you're just hilarious? This is some celebrity named Amy Lee, <laughs> some celebrity. I kind of thought she looked like you. The cheeks. Mona the vampire, this is not meant to be rude. I'm not offended. All these vampire things, I'm not, I'm not offended at all. You kind of look a bit like Collins Lily. Isn't it Lily Collins? Collins Lily. Here you look like him. It's really spooky. He could be my twin, I swear. 
I mean, I always get aerial vibes from you. <laughs> well, since my hair has been red, even though it doesn't look too red right now on the camera at least, um, I've gotten a lot of aerial comments. You and Carly Rae Jepsen have some similarities. Really? I used to love her music. I actually saw her live when she was on Canadian Idol and like, I voted for her all the time. Sniper Wolf. Uh, that's a first for sure. How about this? I looked up pale celebrities. Pale celebrities. Pale. Oh, Wednesday Adams, guys. Wow. I feel like she has a bigger forehead than me. Scarlett Moffat? She looks so familiar. What is she from? I wish my hair was as long as hers. Does this count? It's from a comic. I always think it looks like you for some reason. <laughs> Don't be an idiot. Definitely something I would say. Definitely. Karen Gillian. I mean, her hair is a lot lighter red than mine. She's really pretty. Anne Hathaway. I think you guys would just stretch it a little bit, just a bit. Anyways, that is the end of uh, the pictures that I had <laughs> from what you guys sent me. I couldn't see everybody's because you guys sent a lot, but those were the main ones. And what do you guys think? I honestly, I'll just admit, Jeanette McCurdy is probably the closest one out of all of them. But if you think um, there's anyone that I disagreed with and you think it actually does look like me, definitely comment down below. But I'm <laughs>